grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Today we'll be looking at the topic, our interest and proprietary in God. Our interest and proprietary in God. We have a vested interest in our Father. He has vested interest in us. It's almost like um, so many things in the spiritual uh, lessons that we can learn from our physical lesson. People buy stocks, they have ownership in companies, or so they could buy stakes in one area or the other, maybe it's bonds, debenture, uh, shares, and what have you. And even in, the, even in God as well, in the kingdom of God, God actually has given Himself to us as a gift for us to have ownership in Him proprietary in him and that's the context of what we are looking at today just as a child has a vested interest and proprietary in his father we as well as covenant children of god we have a vested interest and proprietary in god our heavenly father that means everything god is all god is god has given us access to it that's why i said all things are yours that's why god that god calls himself our God. That's it for this God is our God. And a lot of the time you could find that the psalmist David was personalizing God. It's almost in a sense that that's why God gives us the right to do that as his covenant children. Remember in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, John 20, 17, which we also look at, he said, I am ascending to my father and your father my God and your God. What a joy for the interest and the proprietary we have in our Heavenly Father. That is all God is. We have a stake in it. He has given himself to us by covenant. And that's essentially what salvation is about. God giving himself to us. That we have a ownership stake. We could almost say ownership stake, quote and unquote, in the person of God. Bible is about God's interest and proprietary in his people and his people's interest and propriety in him. It's a mutual vested interest we could say. It's almost like many times God will say, abide in me and I in you. God will say things like, I will be their God and they shall be my people. So it's going two ways because God is not just, um, I mean, will I say, you, uh, God is not just making himself our master, he's our master quite alright, but he's not just dwelling in us, he also wants us to dwell in him. So the Bible is essentially from Genesis, we could just see how God called out Abraham, said that I will show you a land that uh, your seed shall be great, made a covenant with him, and in a sense, a covenant is essentially two parties giving themselves to each other, they belong to each other. They, issue of a, a matter the matter of a, of a party is the matter of another person they are one inseparably by covenant so essentially a covenant union is such a union whereby the parties have a an invested interest and proprietary in one another so god has ownership stake in everything about us so let's say to that and that's so much comfort to us as believers that my life my health marriage career us, your as well, yours as well, detail for every believer, everything about us, we don't own ourselves as uh, First Corinthians 6 tells us that we are not our own, we don't belong to ourselves, we belong to him, he is us, our body is his temple, so he has an ownership stake, will I say majority, if not holistically, <laughs> everything about us, because we are no longer our own, we don't live for ourselves, he owns us, he purchased us with his blood, so he has an ownership stake in everything about us, we in turn have an ownership stake in everything about him, he, nobody can have ownership stake in God apart from God giving himself to them, that's why God is our inheritance in the new covenant, he gives himself to us, that's why it's almost like, hey, what did we use to buy ownership stake in him? <laughs> it's just grace. What did he use to buy ownership stake in us? It is his blood. He shed his blood and the blood of his son. And that's the way he was able to purchase the church. So for us as well, we have an ownership stake in him, a vested interest in him. And this vested interest is such that God gives himself to us. His wisdom, his power, his righteousness. I mean, just mention it. So in Jeremiah 32, 20, 38, he said, They shall be my people and I will be they are God. Also Revelation 22 as well. And continually we see it all through scriptures where God keeps saying my people and I will be their God. I will be their God. So God is not just um, satisfied that he's the God generally of his creation but personally to us as believers in Christ Jesus he has given himself to us as our God. So he said they shall be my people 
that is i will have vested interest and proprietary in them i have an ownership stake in them you touch them you touch the apple of my eye you their matter is my matter their issue is my issue because i'm in covenant union with them in christ and i will be their god that is whatever they need me for as their wisdom their righteousness will be of me i am the vine they are my branches they are members of my body so you can see this mystical union this wonderful uh, relationship god has brought us to in christ jesus so we have a vested interest and invested interest and proprietary simply means we have a stake we have something to lose if uh, something happens to a being and thank God nothing evil can happen to God so even if something happens to us God is saying that I have something that will displease me and that's why he says that if anything tries to defile our body he will destroy because he has a vested interest and proprietary in us the knowledge of a man's proprietary in God is comfort of all comfort it is a great comfort because we're going through different things in life seasons in life situations in life and at every of these seasons and situations in life there's what God wants to walk through or us. there's what God is working in us and there's a there's a measure of comfort we need or else discouragement might come in weariness might come in but our ownership said that no you know what that's why Job could say even though he's laying me yet will I trust him because we just say that look he has an ownership stake in me and I don't think it would uh, allow certain things to happen in our life it wouldn't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can carry so interest and proprietary in God makes the heart full of joy as the sun is full of light there's this story that was said long time ago centuries ago at 16 or 17 centuries of this young man in the ship voyage and there was great storm that was happening in the sea and everybody was troubled but this young man was not troubled he was just went about and after the whole thing went down was quiet they now asked him what made you so be at peace during the storm the boy simply said because my father is the sailor <laughs> and I know that he's not, <laughs> he's not going to drown the ship or do something crazy and oh, what a way for us to see ourselves that look, God the Father is the sovereign God, the God that nobody can resist his will, nobody can hinder his purpose for us to just have our nerves calm. We have propriety in God because he has made us members of his body members of his body much more than a person we have stocks or shares in a company because what it simply means is like our feelings he said we easily touched by the feelings of our infirmities what affect us affect him if you touch any member of my body my head is going to react and so god is saying that by salvation in christ jesus we have a proprietary name by him making us members of his body we are the bone of his bone we are the flesh of his flesh by covenant in christ jesus so anything that relates to him relates to us whatever affects us affect him as well it's just by confidence you know so just as a wife has a proprietary in her husband we have a proprietary in the Lord as our husband so a wife naturally inherits everything the man has the husband has and she has a vested interest in the man <laughs> the health of the husband affects I mean is a concern to the wife the wellness of the husband is uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a priority to the wife so even for us as well let's not see ourselves as uh, more or less like we are on the frolic of our own and then uh, it's almost like uh, uh, that's why God will always say continuously don't be afraid that I will be with you that I will never leave you nor forsake you Hebrews 13 I mean continually through scriptures God giving comfort to his people so a wife has a vested interest and proprietary in her husband we as well have in our Lord is our Lord is our husband is our bridegroom what a joy just because of our interest and proprietary in God we can write my on God's life on God's wisdom God's power God's strength God's righteousness God's glory I mean the love of God whatever belongs to God apart from his throne and his deity and he even said that well let's not even go deep into that but whatever communicable attribute that God has God says we can write my on it that's why the Lord said the glory in John 17 when he was praying he said the glory you've given me I've given it to them and so he has made us members whatever belongs to any my head the glory of my head is that my body is well nourished and taken care of so we can write my on god's life on god's wisdom god's righteousness god's law on every communicable attribute of god god says it is ours it is ours in any situation we need it for that's why i say if anyone lack wisdom let him call on me 
it's the strength of God. I said, this, I said the, my, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The grace of God. God says it is yours. All things are yours in Christ Jesus. For in Him are yea and amen. So nothing calms our nerves or the human soul like the knowledge of having an interest and proprietary in God. It's one thing to have interest, a vested interest and proprietary in God. It's another thing to know, a clear sight of it, a working knowledge of it, which is what the Holy Spirit does in our life. So without a working knowledge of that, it will almost be like a ship that is in the uh, that is in the in the boat uh, in the sea and is just being tossed to and fro but a knowledge a revelation knowledge continually by the spirit of god in our hearts that look i have a proprietary a vested interest in god and so i am not by myself god is god god is my matter is of topmost priority to god every one of us individually what a joy god cheers us with his presence because of our proprietary in him so his presence is always with us what a joy what a joy and he is the omnipresent one that is everywhere so we carry his manifest presence wherever we go and this is why our thanksgiving knows no limit the moment god is just opening our eyes to various things several things that unlimited possibilities that are open to us in christ jesus so he cheers us with his presence so that we bring the presence of god into any environment we come into also god supports us with his power because of our proprietary in him so there will never be a situation god that will never ordain a situation where we'll be in any situation and the exceeding greatness of his power is not there to work for us it's one thing for the power of God to be present with us, another thing for us to be aware and for us to have exercised ourselves to release the potential of that power into that situation. So that is why God continually wants us to grow in His knowledge, to grow in the grace of God, to grow in the knowledge of God, to grow in our work and our fellowship with Him. Because through that, we just have seen all that our project is not just our project. Your career your business your marriage it's not just your marriage your business god is actively involved god owns me he owns you he owns every one of us that are believers in christ jesus he just doesn't own our spirit but every part and parcel of us so god guides us with his counsel because of our proprietary in him he makes sure that we don't lack his counsel if we would but ask him I don't think he forces himself on anyone. He has given us a will. But every now and then we return back to him. Lord, what are you saying in this matter? Lord, I need your wisdom. I need your counsel. Am I to, what path are you leading or guiding to? Because the Spirit is always there to guide us. So he leads us by Spirit because of our propriety in him. He said, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so God also leads us by his Spirit because of our propriety in him. Because he has made us one Spirit with himself. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So God leads us continually, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of grace, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So what a joy. It's one of the greatest assets. <coughs> Excuse me. It's one of the greatest assets that God has given us in redemption. God giving us a spirit inside of us to lead us, to guide us, to unveil the things of God to us. What a joy. God also supplies us with his goodness because of our proprietary in him. We have a good God. We serve a good God. They say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. A gracious God. He supplies us with his goodness every day. He says, surely goodness and mercy will pursue us. We chase after us. Like they said, that the original context was like a prey, a lion or so, chasing after, uh, I'm, I'm a predator chasing after his prey. I mean, an animal going after, um, going after, uh, hunting after another animal. So the goodness and mercy of God chasing us every day. Every day, wherever we go to, what a joy because we have an ownership stake in Him. Our success is God's success. Just like a father and a son, just imagine even much more than that. The father, any, any right thinking father or mother will rejoice at the success of their children because they have a vested interest and proprietary in their children and their children likewise over their father. What a joy. So God clothes us with His righteousness because of our proprietary in him we have his righteousness in isaiah 54 17 he has said that look your righteousness is of me god is saying that look if you're going to if you if you want to spot any hole in them you come to me he personalized so he clothes us with his garments of righteousness because of our vested interest and proprietary in him in christ a man can only have 
a vested interest and proprietary in God through Christ Jesus. There is no other way to have a stake in God apart from Christ. It is truly through Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. So God also nourishes us, nourishes us with His Word because of our proprietary in Him. He feeds us continually with His Word. He said, You are already clean by the words I have spoken unto you. He gives us His Word. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So He's feeding us. He's is giving us counsel in any situation if we will but listen and God will never fail to send his word to us over any matter. I wouldn't like any of my children or ditto for you as well as your parents. You wouldn't like a situation, your children are in a situation and you have a piece of advice that would help them and you would want to offer it to them. How much more our Heavenly Father? So God teaches us to profit by our proprietary in him. So he also teaches us to profit. He said in every labor there is profit. That is in any work of our hands. Profit is that to be fruitful, to be productive. Not just only it's not just confined to a business sense. Yes, the business sense is part of it, but we are adding value wherever we go to. We are a person that is bringing the aroma of Christ on the table. That where the wisdom of this world has failed, we bring in the wisdom of God into that atmosphere, and there is a light that's shining from our life that men cannot comprehend, darkness cannot comprehend, that men in our good work and glorifying our Father who is in heaven as well. What a joy to have an interest in God. So our proprietary in God relates to our ownership once again. Our proprietary in God relates to our ownership, stake and vested interest in all God is and all God has. In what God is. So God is our vine. God is our shepherd. God is our father. God is our righteousness. God is light. God is love. And his communicable attributes. And there are certain incommunicable attributes of God. God has not I don't think God has given us permission to share that with him, like his deity, the omnipresence of God. And so there are certain things that is not us, but the nature of God, he has made us partakers of his nature. What a joy. God also enlightens us with his light because of our proprietary name. So what we enjoy in God is unlimited. It's actually called the unsearchable riches of Christ. So we can see that and it only takes the Lord himself to be unveiling it to us by his spirit continually because they are beyond what any person can exhaust. They are inexhaustible. The treasures of his wisdom and knowledge. So he enlightens us. He gives us light so that we know the right steps to take and so that this light in our life will now become a medium through which our life is light in any environment we get into. It is a clear sight of our proprietary in God that heightens and sweetens our communion with Him. Or else communion with God will just be like a ritual. It's almost like, okay, one of those things I have to check the box and go. But the more God is unveiling Himself to us, revealing Himself to anybody, you find the more you just find that you're trying to play everything on your way to just be with God. You're not just waiting for morning devotion. There's no such thing as morning devotion. Don't take me to the market with that. There's no such thing that this is the secluded time. Yes, we have secluded time, but you are always longing for all day long, looking for an opportunity to commune with Him because you just see it. It just becomes a very rich and a very rewarding experience that every now, all through the day, our heart is giving thanks. It doesn't mean that we are just locked up in a room, but every part, whether in the boardroom, whether in the Senate, whether in the marketplace, whether in the church, everywhere, our heart is attuned. The posture of our heart is continually on Him. Our eyes are on Him. What a joy. A man that sees his interest in God, we hang upon Him and trust in Him. That's where trust comes from. I mean, if you only trust anybody when you know that they have something to lose, in your loss. You only trust anybody when you know that they have an interest in your success. So you can put your trust on them. So that's why God on visit, look, your success is my success. If any, you are the apple of my eye, that I want to be involved in your life. And that's why my son went to the cross of Calvary, as I would say that paraphrase, that to die for humanity so that we could not have an interest, a vested interest or a proprietary in God. So our proprietary in God is a pair of great price. Money cannot buy this pair of great price. That's why the merchant in that parable in Matthew 13 sold everything he had so as to just get his much, uh, this pair of great price. That is, it is in having God as our Lord, as our Father, as our Savior, as our righteousness, as our sanctification. What a joy for God becoming a life-giving spirit in us. So, what is again our proprietary in God is also water or is also manna in the wilderness. Manna means what is this? That is what sustains us in any wilderness season we are going through. 
continually that is the food of God, the bread from heaven, as we might call it, or as the Hebrews, the Jews call it, that what is this? But this is something we are receiving from God continually. Because we know that He's our Father, He's interested in our nourishment, in our being strengthened and edified. Also, our proprietary in God is water out of a rock. Imagine in the desert, in the desert of life, in the season, we need this water, this rivers of living water, because it is this water of life we drink of him that turns to a river of living water that flows through us. So uh, it is because of our proprietary in God. This is it is water coming out of a rock. It's, dividends are just, I mean, numberless, immeasurable. Our proprietary in God is cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and that's what Israel enjoyed and uh, the covenant children of God keep enjoying every day because it becomes a pillar of cloud to us by day to shield us from the harshness of the heat of the sun and at night the pillar of cloud by night to preserve uh, the pillar of fire by night so as the cold of the night is, is some we have a fire that is warming us up it's because God is involved in our life it's because whatever pertains to us pertains to God because of the covenant we have in Christ Jesus is judged by sheer grace it's just by sheer grace God has made this to happen so our proprietary in God is also like an ointment for every soul for every sickness or any deformity any challenge in our health in any area it is an ointment it's a medicine it is medicinal imagine when someone is going through a challenge a medicine comes in there to support to provide healing so our proprietary in God is like an ointment for every soul also it is like Jacob's ladder ascending and descending into heaven that is our medium we have no access to the presence of god the holiest of all if not for the fact that christ has purchased these rights we have or i call it this inheritance we have received to be members of his body that is our own jacob's father where we ascend and descend into the throne of heaven also our proprietary god is a remedy for every malady that is for every infirmity for every sickness for every challenge this is a real remedy a real medicine a solution and it's also that our life will become a solution in any environment we find ourselves that is we have the answer right with us because god is himself dwelling in us so our perpetuating god is also an anchor at the sea at the sea of life an anchor essentially helps the ship to stay in bound within certain radius because it's that rope or whatever the anchors are the shore so that the tossing to and fro of the waters or the waves will not just carry the ship away so it's an anchor our hope rest our soul is the anchor of our soul which it rest upon and look you know what i have a vested interest and proprietary in god god will not let me down god will not forsake me i mean that's what david essentially was doing in the psalms he was just boasting about it i mean just talking about it which we towards the end we look at psalm 18 2 where david essentially was using the proprietary word eight times in one verse in the scripture but we get there towards the end our proprietary in god is also a shield against satan is a shield against satan because we just know it like he prayed the lord prayed for us in john 17 that look i'm praying not for the whole world but for them that you keep them from evil it's also said in john 10 that no one can snatch them from my hand so it's a shield against satan because really we belong to god that's why i said our body is his temple whatever tries to defy it he is going to destroy uh, what a joy our proprietary in god is also a star to guide us remember the three uh the, the the wise men the three wise men how they were guided by the star to where the lord jesus christ in his incarnation was born it's also a star that guides us a star to guide us i'm not just saying physically but it's it's because god guides us because he has a great stake in our life he laid down the life of his son so that he could own us every part and parcel out of us because we are not our own we didn't create ourselves so our proprietary god is also a staff to support us like the shepherd we have a staff to support them to guide the shepherd as well a staff to straighten us up discipline us correction and what have you what a joy and that's why every discipline is because of love god loves us that's why he disciplines us when we air our proprietary god is also a sword to protect us a sword whereby a two-edged sword we could say the word of god through which we are protected is this we call it the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and that's why we have access to the revelations of god that's why god is revealing himself because they become a sword to us in the day of battle our proprietary god is also a pavilion to hide us it's a refuge it's a place like sanctuary city like they had in the old testament it's 
place that shields us usually a pavilion you use it for like a building or a house let's just use it in that context whereby to shield from the harshness of the weather whether it's raining whether it's sunny so it's a pavilion that hides us a pavilion of our redemption our proprietor in god what's a joy to the numberless things we could say our proprietor it's also a fire that warms us a fire that keeps us warm everybody has a measure of fire in them uh, because our body temperature has to be in a certain level so we also need a fire that will warm up as warm up warm up warm up warm up us warm, warm us up in most in every now and then in any situation so because of our mutual propriety in one another our matter is god's matter my matter is god's matter god's matter is my matter so my body is his body as well his body is my body as believers, the same for us. That's why he puts certain times a burden of intercession, maybe a burden of the lost souls in different one of us is children, whatever area he has called us to. So we don't just say, Oh, that's his kingdom. No, his kingdom is my kingdom, his business is my business. As Jesus said, it doesn't mean I shall be about my father's business. So that's why it calls for a higher level of responsibility from us. So our matter is his master. His matter is our matter. So his work is our work as well. And what a joy. So we start seeing that even when we are working on the church or maybe in any project uh, or any kingdom project we don't see it as something that is for the pastors or for certain church no it's our father's business what a job so it was the matters clear sight of their proprietary god that made them dear their prosecutors they could see what others could not see that's why they could dare that look you, can, you can't scare us with death that is just a bridge for us to go spend the rest of our life with him <laughs> in paradise so they had that confidence they had something in them they had this glow in them this holy divine glow whereby they could fear was out of the windows for them because they saw it that look we have a god we have a stake in god and our dividend is not confined to this earthly realm here but it's also greater one is even waiting for us at the other side there what a joy so as jesus said in john 20 17 i am ascending to my father and your father i think this is the first time technically i could say from the scripture that a human being could call god their father is the resurrection of the lord jesus christ i believe that's the starting point where we became sons and daughters of god there's no sons there's no daughters really there's no male female but sons of god essentially you know what i mean and my god and your god so essentially saying that you now have an interest a vested interest and proprietary in god because god is not just god of creation to you but god is now your god god is now our god god is now our father and this is why we pray our father who art in heaven because it's a joy we are now singing to him we're grateful to him it's like we are having a possession this is my car this is my house that means you can do what you can do reasonably with such properties those properties or assets are now adding value to you bringing joy satisfaction to you so what a joy i am ascending to my father and your father and to my god and you god what a joy and this is why the holy spirit has to keep opening our eyes of understanding continually to the revelation of what god has done for us in christ Jesus, that we have a vested interest and proprietary name and in psalms 2 16 my beloved is mine and i am his so we are his and he is ours his matter is my matter his body is my body my body is his body as the, the lover said he said my beloved is mine and i am his so we belong to him we are his temple we are members of his body our father is our husband is our lord is our master is the vine we have the branches there's an organic inseparable organic union between us and him so there's a mutual interest and proprietary between god and his people you can't it's inseparable it's a covenant that, that's why it's called the everlasting covenant the eternal covenant it's because god himself has made himself one with us in the person of the lord jesus christ that's a mutual one a mutual abiding we abide in him he's abiding in us he lives in us and we live in him he's our god and we are his people what a joy money could not buy this nothing could give this to any mortal human being apart from god himself god has made himself brought himself into a covenant fellowship and a covenant relationship with us in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, our interest and proprietary in God. So continually, so there's a mutual transfer. As all God is, he is for us. 
So we could say God is a shepherd for us. God is the creator of the heaven and the earth for us. God is good. We believe for our benefits. There's a lot of benefit for the world. God is merciful to us. God is gracious to us. So all we are, we are for God as well. So whatever we have, whatever I have, should be for Him. There should be nothing I have, nothing I have that should that I have that should not be for His glory. That should not be tailored to make Him to to to, to because a master, a servant, I mean a slave should not or a servant should not really have anything that should not be holy for His master. What a joy! So as all God is all the time for us, so as God is all the time for us, every time, whether in the night, in the day, any season, He said, "Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world." So as God is all the time for us, so we ought all the time to be for Him. Every time, every time at His service, what would you have me to do? Probably should be the posture of our heart. This should be the posture of our mind, of our soul, of our spirit, of our body to Him. What does the Master have us to do? Ah, we want to bear, He wants to bear much fruit. We are vessels, glorified vessels. is the one to now walk in us to will and to do for His good pleasure. What a joy to this proprietary we have in God. There is more under heaven. There is none under heaven. There is no under heaven that has more interest and proprietary in us than God has. There is none. It doesn't have. There's no company. Companies love their employees, and that's why we find a lot of the time vested interest, proprietary. It's almost like a business time, you almost could call it, whereby certain top management staffs have certain um, stakes in the company, whether they are given stocks after maybe three years it's been vested and what have you, and so that to try to retain their best and brightest, and so that they have a stake in that company. If the company is making a loss, they feel it as well because it's not part of their company, or you could go buy shares in a particular company. So, but there is none under heaven that has more interest and propriety in us as God does. So, I don't think God will be delighted or happy to see any member of his body sick. To see any member of his body not fulfilling the potential of what he redeemed us for because he has a lot to gain we are the reflection of his glory we are his branch to reflect his fruit to the that's why i said let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify our father in heaven so god's interest and proprietary in us is far greater than what any father has in his children I have an interest, a vested interest and proprietary in my children. You as well do, in my spouse as well, my, my wife. You as well to your wife or your, or your husband, as the case may be, your children. You have a vested interest, but not as much as God has in us. He said that if our earthly father can give us good gifts, how much more our heavenly father? Far more than a general we have in his soldiers. And generals are very protective of their battalion, of their soldiers, or a king in his people or a husband over his wife or a master over his servant god is infinitely far has more stakes in us they their stake might just be that look it's it might even be with ulterior motive it might be just because uh, for whatever reason but god he died he proved his love to us he died on our behalf on the person of the lord jesus christ is there a greater love anyone can show towards their subject there is no believer that has such an interest or proprietary in himself as god has in us or as god has in him so even so nobody has more stake and interest in me even my biological father or anybody that is in my as a stakeholder in my life none of them have any interest or proprietary to the measure that god has in me same for you even i myself don't have proprietary and vested interest in as much as i love myself god loves me more than i love myself god cares for me even beyond my conscious imagination god goes defies what I, I might think i need best for myself because he has a vested interest and proprietary in every one of us his children what a joy this is what causes our hearts to be leaping for joy and ever grateful to our heavenly father so because of our interest and proprietary in god we can boldly say god is our god this is why we can boldly say in the day, in the night, in any season of life, that this God is our God. Others might not be able to say that, okay, He's God of creation, but we can personalize it. That Look, because if you have shares in a company, that's your company. <laughs> and, and in a company shares, you can't claim to have everything about it. You can just say, okay, I have shares in this company, others who have shares. But in God, because you have a part, a, a partial part in that company, really, depending on the shares you have and what have you. If you have 10,000 shares and they have, let's say, um, a billion stocks or shares, I mean, you just have a minute fraction. But there's no such with God. I don't have a minute fraction of God. 
God has given himself to us holistically. He has made himself available to us, to every one of us children. If we don't distribute God, God is not divided among his shares, among his children, like shares in a company are divided among the shareholders. No, God gives himself 100% to every one of us. What a joy, what a joy. So David in Psalm 18 verse 2, we could say, used proprietary eight times, eight times. I mean, the concept of proprietary, because he was personalizing the God, is, is God. He said, the Lord is my rock, my rock. He didn't say, and essentially he was using what Moses wrote in Deuteronomy, that the God is our rock, right? But he personalized that, look, it's not just rock of Israel. Look, I have to bring it home to me. He is my rock, he is my fortress, my deliverer. What a joy. And that's the Psalms, essentially. Psalms, essentially, is you could almost say in many cases that the Psalm is now personalizing what God has given in the Word of God. So God wants us to take ownership of Him, let's put it that way, to be aware to have a clear sight of what he has given to us in himself. So continuously, also in Psalm 18, 2 as well, con continue, is my the Lord is my what? Is my rock, my fortress, my uh, my my fortress, uh, my salvation, my refuge. And he now said, My deliverer is my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield, that's my refuge, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold eight times in one verse <laughs> only you and it's available to every one of us every one of us god is a shield to us he said be that those in the secret place of the most that shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i will trust so we could we because god has given himself to us he has given us his life what else higher than his life can he give to us what else higher than his spirit can he give to us so by him giving us the spirit he's telling us that look you have an ownership stake in me the spirit, my spirit, I, I share with you. Is there any other creature I said I put my spirit in or I put my life in? So you could imagine what we enjoy in Christ Jesus. Maybe also why Psalm 48 as well now says, For this God is our forever and ever. He will be our guide even on to the end. What a joy. The greatest asset any being can have in life. If we call God an asset, it's just the very being of God himself. For this God is our God forever and ever and will be our guide even unto the end. Psalm 48 verse 14. He will be our God. That for this God is our God forever and ever. An everlasting portion. An everlasting uh, interest or an everlasting possession that God has given to us in himself in inheritance. So today we need to look at the topic of our interest and proprietary in God, our vested interest and proprietary. We say proprietary is essentially to have an ownership stake, a vested interest, maybe in a company, in the shares, in a person. We say just like a son has a vested interest in a father and the father has vested interest in the son or proprietary in the son as well we as well as children of god covenant children of god in christ jesus we have a vested interest and proprietary in our heavenly father essentially we say the bible is about god having a vested interest and proprietary in his people and his people also having a vested interest and proprietary in himself that's why god said i will be their god and they shall be my people and that's one of the early things the lord said in his resurrection that i am ascending to my father and your father my god and your god so we could almost say that jesus came to make god our father jesus came to make god our god jesus died on the cross of Calvary for god to become us that's why i say your god your father what a joy could any other possession or any asset be greater than having god as our father god as our savior god as our lord god as our redeemer as our sanctifier none under heaven has an interest our proprietary in us greater than god has in us greater than he has proprietary and interest in us greater than we have in ourselves greater than any father can have in their children greater than any master can have over their slave or husband over their wives or king over his people or general over his soldiers god cares about us our matter is a priority he said he's easily touched by the feeling of our infirmity this is why praise and adoration is always coming from our hearts to god continually that we are not our own who are bought with a price the church of god which he purchased with his own blood he purchased us he redeemed us by his blood we did not pay anything per se to have ownership stake in him it's just by grace it's by grace he has given himself to us because of our faith in Christ Jesus. What a joy to what God has done for us. Hallelujah to God the Father. Hallelujah to God the Son. Hallelujah to God the Holy Spirit. 
our interests are proprietary in God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.